Today, the Nectar Crew got out into the industry world and caught up with one of the premier cannabis chocolate companies in the Pacific Northwest, Groon, when they invited us out to their kitchen in Portland, Oregon. This is where we make all of our bars. So we have these incredible, I'll start with the beginning. So these are our melters. And this is 200 pounds of chocolate that goes into each melter with the cannabis distillate, which is appropriately portioned out according to percentages. And we take that chocolate and we put it into these incredible oh, Italian Ferraris. Um, right. And these, these help us temper the chocolate and they also help us with the um, So this is how all cars are made. We're just talking. We're not sure. here. This is the whole crew. Yeah. And Johnny actually takes four people to operate. They put the bars in these tracks, it runs through, wraps, comes out, somebody catches them at the end. Everything gets counted, put back in the safe while everything's out for testing. After receiving a tour of the facility and seeing some of the yummiest chocolates you've ever laid eyes on, it was time to meet some of the people behind the scenes to see just who makes this product and how it makes it from here to our shelves. Hi, I'm Chris over here at Green Chocolates, and uh, this is our chocolate canner for making medicated bits. We were surprised to learn the strict specifications behind the creation of Groom Bites, and even more amazed once we learned the process in which the medicated chocolate was applied. This is an incredible process, and this is literally the absolute hardest thing we could have ever chosen to do for a cannabis infused product. I can only imagine. Because everything has to be so specifically weighed. Yeah. As we continued on talking to more employees, seeing more of the operation, and checking out some of the new products Grun is introducing, the kitchen manager demonstrated for us how each of their flagship product, the Grun Bar, is made. Okay, so the mach these machines are pretty smart machines. So basically we set them up like to a certain number with a certain input like grade in between each pour. So they come exact how we want it. So these bars are the, our plain sea salt milk and they have to be 45 grams. So in order to get a 45 grams, we need to shoot for at least between 230 grams and 232 grams as a total in the, eight for the, the whole mold. At least everybody gets a little bit loud. If you gotta put in the chicken table to get rid of all the bubbles, basically. Make sure that it's gonna be accurate. Even though once that they're ready, we still wait every single one of them to make sure that the customer gets the actual perfect bar. Each bar must be hand trimmed and weighed before being passed on to the next phase, making this a bar that has a true unique personal touch. This is Lee. She's the person that trims the bars. She's originally from Vietnam, a place where views on cannabis aren't always very supportive. We caught up with her in the kitchen to chat for a few. And have you been in chocolate for, for many years? Or is this kind of your first? Uh, I, uh, lucky I get the job here. Yeah. And I'm uh, the oldest one. I'm 68 years old. Ooh, I'm, still working. Young. <laughs> yeah, I'm still working with all the young people and they are very nice people. Absolutely. Very good to work with. Absolutely. What is your, you know, from your country, what's your view on cannabis? It's a lot different than here in America. Uh, huh? Illegal. Very illegal. We, uh, we, uh, if we use them, we go to jail. With my own people, my age, that's a no-no to use them. Of course. But uh, uh, after a while, I think I, I love it myself. I after a whirlwind of information about this amazing product, it was time for Brandon to sit down with the women at the top of this incredible company and find out how it all came to be. All right, this is Brandon here with Christine from yeah. Groon. Great, thanks so for visiting us. You are the owner, CEO, I'm founder. the owner, founder, Grand Poopa. Uh, Grand Poopa. <laughs> and then before this, you were an architect, right? Yeah. Yep. How from architect to chocolate? Accident. accident. Pure accident. Yep, absolutely. No transitioning from architecture over into cannabis um, was really natural and really unexpected. Mm -hmm. And I, I just saw a real hole in the market. So tell me about the starting years of, of Groon. How did it how did it start once you had the idea in your head that you wanted to do? Yeah, so I literally started this in my kitchen. I think most of these startups often do. Mm -hmm. um, I had just had a baby, had was home on maternity leave. Oh wow. I'm a very, very kind of 
crazy busy person. I didn't know what to do with myself and that's really how this started. Decided I was gonna learn chocolate. I was completely uh, just flabbergasted. And chocolate was really difficult. It's so you really didn't hard. even know chocolate? I didn't so. even know chocolate, no. Oh, yeah. I had no idea. She's totally new. Totally okay. new. And I'm not even really dabbling with cannabis right now. I'm just trying to understand chocolate. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of started exploring with different mediums on infusing it. Um, we started with RSO and now we transitioned over to distillate. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was really it. I, My nanny is now our kitchen manager. So she uh, was my first employee and would wrap bars at the dining room table. This was way back in the early days when literally uh, Mike McGrath, who was independent, would drive around with a tote of candy bars and go in and sell them individually. Really they weren't yeah. packaged. I mean, this oh, and this wasn't even three years ago. Wow. I mean, the industry has changed so much. It's changed quite so, a bit. Yeah. So how many employees do you have now? We just hired our 25th employee. Oh, wow. Um, it's What's so funny is that so many people think we're this giant company. Mm -hmm. I think we are so tiny, and we do so many, so many things with 25 people. It is incredible. Um, and we operate in this tiny little submarine of a building. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I think we've done a really good job of being very successful and very sophisticated for a small company. Absolutely. But I, I also, you know, sometimes I think we have to fight the perception that we're one of these big boys out there because we literally are hand crafting every single product. It's a family. Yeah. It's a real family. We're probably for one of the, the larger companies in Oregon, we're one of the only remaining fully self-funded. Yeah. Um, so I own 100% of this That's and uh, yeah we we haven't taken on any outside investment so we've grown naturally from the very beginning from the first chocolate machine that we built built and we've just been able to, to do that um, who knows what will happen as we look at the other states yeah. but right. for now it's definitely Oregon will will remain kind of employee owned that's where I look at hopefully and that's part of the plan run in uh, other states yeah, we're gonna conquer the world. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. We can truly say this was one of the sweetest experiences we've had so far. We are looking forward to seeing all the new things Groon has coming out for us to enjoy. This is Crash and Brandon. We're here at Groon Chocolate and Factory headquarters. Amazing. It's been an amazing experience. If you guys like this video, click in the link down, subscribe. There's a little bell down there that you'll get all the notification of a lot of content coming up. We appreciate it, you guys. Eat some chocolate. Yes.